once in a while, it is good to encourage each other in the word, to encourage each other in the Lord. Amen. Uh, later on, you'll have Bible study where you'll chew of the mysteries of the word of God, where you'll chew the meat. But for now, allow me to encourage you. Amen. The Bible says when you have been encouraged yourself, go and encourage others. So there are seasons we go through in our lives that we need to be reminded and we need to encourage each other in his word. Not with our thoughts, not with the words of men, not with Facebook quotes, not with a tweet, but with the word of God. Let us turn to the book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel, chapter 1. That is the book of Samuel, and the title of my sermon today, Giving Up is Not an Option. Amen? Giving Up is is not an option. Hallelujah. I need to preach to somebody who is thinking of giving up because that will not be an option. This morning, I hope you will live here knowing that we shall not give up, but we shall continue. The book of Samuel chapter 1 and from verse 1, it says, Now there was a certain man of Ramathim Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elhu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zaph, and Ephraim. Verse 2, and he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was come that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut her womb. And her adversary also provoked her so, for to make her fright, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, to her Hannah, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? Verse 9, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept so. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid but will give unto thine handmaid a man child then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth now Hannah she spake in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard therefore Eli thought she had been drunken and Eli said unto her how long wilt thou be drunken put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered, said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him and as we continue to see in verse 20 wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel saying because I have asked him of the Lord verse 27 for this child I prayed and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him verse 28 therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth he shall be lent to the Lord and 
he worshipped the Lord there. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning that your word is ever fresh. It is ever knowing, all knowing. We thank you, oh God, that your word will come to lift us up, oh God. This morning, we give you all the praise and honor. In Jesus' name, we do pray and believe. Amen. As you can see, our context today is from the book of Samuel. And there we find Hannah, a woman who is barren, a woman who has her co-wife Penina. And Penina provoked her. Not only was she there to show the goodness and the abundance of God in her life, Penina provoked Hannah. And so we see in my first uh, point today is that suffering must come. As you've seen the word, it says the Lord shut up the womb of Hannah. So no one, so she had not sinned. She was not uh, doing things wrong. It is the Lord himself who shut her womb. So we must recognize in this walk of salvation, suffering will come. Suffering must come. It must come. The word of God tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10, why we must suffer. Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. Pastor Saul has been teaching us on the sons of God and how a son must go through the sufferings of Christ. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10, it says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, Make you perfect. Make you what? Perfect. Establish you. Strengthen you. And settle you. So you must know the reason for your suffering. Number one is to make you perfect. Christ himself, the son of God, by the obedience and through the sufferings he suffered, was made the son of God. We will all go through suffering in this work of salvation. We will go through suffering. That is, a, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you will go through suffering. But what happens when you are in the midst of your suffering? What happens when you're in the midst of the dry bones? What happens when you are thrown in the den of lions? What happens when you're in the midst of the fire? Will the fourth man show up? Will you give up? Or will you continue to know that my God is making me perfect? Hallelujah. Ah, we must communicate. I'm not preaching to a dead congregation this morning. We must communicate. Hallelujah. Ah. Chapter 5, verse 10. It says, he will make you perfect. Be ye perfect, for I am perfect. When the world says perfection doesn't, there's no perfect man. Excuse you. The word of God tells me there is a perfect man. And you will be made perfect through your suffering. Hannah, the Bible says, year after year, Penina provoked her. Imagine the situation she's in. Penina, I can imagine Penina coming. Ah, Baba, wow, Kuja Baba. Hmm, I like who you mm. Provoked her. Constant provoking, year after year. Have you ever been in a situation where you have haters? Mm. I call Penina a hater pusher. A hater who is pushing you towards your goal. Because if you do not have haters in your life, you will not have the encouragement. You will not have the zeal. You will not have the zeal to say, he prepares the table before my enemies. Hallelujah. Ay, ay, ay. Thank you, Jesus, for my online congregation. If you're there, say amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> And it says he will establish you. He will establish you. So your suffering will establish you. The bamboo tree, when you plant the bamboo, it does not take one year to, you know the way you plant a bean and in a few days you can start seeing beans coming. Or you plant maize and in a few days you just see. Yeah, it is coming. Oh, it's coming good. In a few, three months, you've harvested. Now, the bamboo, once you plant the bamboo, that's when you start beginning to see a bamboo trying to come up. 
three years, it takes the root of the bamboo to be established. Three good years. That's why no matter what storm may come, no matter what rain, lightning, and thunder may come, it is impossible to bring a bamboo tree down. It is so hard because it took three years, three good years for the roots to establish themselves. So your suffering may take a while because you're establishing your roots. You're going down. But if you want to uproot and you come out, oh, yeah, I'm here, you'll be like amazed. The floods come and it's gone with the whole harvest. They've gone. Or like the beans, it just took a few days and the roots on the surface and a few rain and we've lost the entire plant. But when you're like a bamboo tree, winds will come. The forest will come. The storm will come. But you will be still and you will know that he is God. Am I preaching to somebody? That I, I think I'm the only one who's been suffering. I think I'm the only one who's going through some situation and ask God, where are you? What is going on? Do I have some people who have suffered? Do I have some people who have suffered? Oh, your life is great. And let me assure you, suffering is coming. Suffering is coming. To be manifest, to be a son of God, you will suffer. But you must know, like I said, the title is this method. Giving up is not an option. You cannot give up. Which brings me to my second point. Recognize you are weak. Recognize you are weak. The problem with humanity is trying to solve all your problems. Right now we have Chinese who are creating for us sun, a fake sun, because we want to solve all our problems. Man was not created to depend on yourself. You were created to depend on the creator. You were created to absolutely depend on the creator. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, My grace is sufficient, for in your weakness I am made strong. You are weak. Recognize your weakness. Recognize you cannot do it without God. Whatever suffering you're going through, whatever circumstance, God is the fourth man in the fire. Hallelujah. Giving up is not an option. Because you have one to rely on. You have one to hold on to. Ah, Pastor Saul, come help me a little bit. Please stand here. Uh, because when you are weak, when you are weak, you can no longer stand. When you are weak, you need, hold me, uh, don't let me fall. When you are weak, you need to lie. You need to lie. You need somebody who will hold you. You need God to hold you because you are weak. Because you cannot stand. Because you cannot make it with your human flesh. You need a creator. You need the God of the heavens and earth to step into your situation. Come on. Tell your neighbor. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because giving up is not an option. Thank you. Ah, oh, thank you for not following me. Man will follow you. Let me tell you. Man. Man Adam will follow you. Will what? Will let you down. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in princes. But we we will trust in the name of the Lord. We are weak. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40, 31. Let me have it on the screen so we can go quickly. Isaiah. Isaiah writing to us. Isaiah chapter 40. Ah, my technical team, I think I'll be faster than you. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord. 
They that wait upon the Lord, you've been waiting. You've been coming to Kesha. You've been waking up early. You've been diligently waiting on the Lord. What shall he do? He shall renew the strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You will run and you will not be weary. So your weakness will come to a point where it completely depends on the grace, the sufficient grace of God. That's why we shout, your grace is enough. Your grace is all I need. Because his grace is all you need. When you come to a place when all and everything you need is God's grace, then you have become to manifest as a son of God. Giving up is not an option. Christians worldwide, I cannot keep up with my inbox because people are giving up. They need prayers. People are giving up. They're giving up. But you cannot give up. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. You have to pick yourself up. My Bible tells me the righteous man will fall down. You will fall. You will fall. But you cannot stay down. Because giving up is not an option. When you fall down, you must find the strength to rise up. Because they that wait on the Lord shall rise up. They shall run and not be weary. Come on, I said to them, I've come to encourage you. We cannot give up. Oh, oh, come on. You guys prepare me for a tough world out there. Hallelujah. Number three, don't forget the goodness of God in your life. God has been good to you, hasn't he? But when we are going through the suffering, we forget. We forget his goodness. When we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, we forget. The Bible says in Psalms 103 verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We cannot be like the children of Israel after they have been redeemed from slavery, after the Lord has shaken heaven and earth, brought down plagues, struck the firstborn dead. He has moved the heart of Pharaoh, a tough and horrible man. And all of a sudden, when they're in the wilderness, they begin to forget. They begin to forget. Ah, now I remember in Egypt we were eating watermelon. You begin to remember your days when you're in the world. I remember I used to go clubbing every, every Friday. I used to have money for the club. But now you're in Christ. You don't even have fare to come for Kesha on Friday. But when you're in the world, you're going to get club drinks on me. <laughs> So you forget that the same God who moved heaven and earth to redeem your soul. Now that you're walking through the wilderness, we forget his benefits. We cannot forget. When you are down, when you're in the miry clay, when you have given up, when you're not seeing the way forward, go back into your life and remember the good things God did for you. Remember when you are in a point and you said, Awaken all my soul, praise his name for he is good and great because you had those moments. You had the moments when God shook heaven and earth for your life. But now you're in the wilderness, you are forgetting. How can we forget? Do not forget. The same God who did it yesterday, he's the same God today. He's the same God forevermore. But you will go through a wilderness period. You'll go through a time when it is dry. 
Those are time as young couples who are talking about the wilderness in your marriage. Because we all go through it. It may be wilderness of emotions where all of a sudden you wake up and you're wondering, what am I doing with this man? What am I doing with this wicked woman? I do not know. I need to rise up and get out. It could be a wilderness in your finances where you're looking at each other and saying, what are we going to eat? What are we giving our baby? There's no more finances it could be wilderness in your walk together. You have nothing to show, but you have to remember the same God who brought you together. If your marriage was founded in God, if it was founded by God, you have to remember the goodness and the greatness that God brought you together. So when you go through the wilderness, you remember, I remember the locust. My enemies were flooded by locust. I remember they had no water. They were drinking blood. I remember my enemies when I was down. They had the heavens and earth struck their firstborn. You must remember what God has done for you. Forget not all his benefits. We have walked in the benefits of God. You have seen the benefits of God. You were sick at some point. There was a time you could not even lift up your eyes, but now you're in health and all of a sudden, walking to church, you're complaining. Why? You have forgotten the day you woke up and you had COVID. You have forgotten the day you woke up and you could not move your body. Forget not all his benefits. Amen. Number four. Know who you are. Mm. Know who you are. We like singing, we are a chosen generation. Called forth to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. And I all I require for life, God has given me. I know what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. Are you walking? I'm walking miracles. I live a life of favor. Hey. I'm walking. I'm walking in power. Come on. I live a life of favor. But then we sing it and we live it in the sanctuary and we go out and we face our daily lives and we forget who we are. We completely forget who we are. A child of God, a son of God, whatever stage you are in Christ, a friend, a servant, we forget whose we are. We completely forget who you are. You must know who you are. When we say manifest to be a son of God, a son must know they're a son. A, must, a son must know you're a son. But most of your adoption papers got lost because you're still wondering who you are. It says God adopted us and we became his family. Huh? Were you there when Pastor Saul was preaching that? His adoption. You were adopted. The word of God says you are adopted. Then you became family. You did not become an adopted son. You became a son. Romans chapter 8. The book of Romans chapter 8 tells us clearly, once we understand this, once we understand this, it doesn't matter what you go through. Giving up will not be an option. Verse 17, I'll let's start from 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with us, our spirit, that we are the children of God. And verse 17, and if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. Ah, here's the suffering again. If so that we suffer with him. So you have suffered that we may also be glorified together. Verse 18, for I reckon, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, 
For I reckon, are we reading together, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. They are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So we are joint heirs with Christ. Now do you know what a heir is? You have complete, yani, everything that Christ has. You are joint heirs with him. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose here on earth shall be lost in heaven. And you better have faith about it. You cannot be in doubt. You cannot, oh, 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 I need this. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Will the Lord give me? Will he not give me? Do you remember when I preached, you cannot have a plan B. You cannot have a plan B. Plan A is God and God only and there's no other plan. Because giving up is not an option. Can I hear you say, giving up is not an option. Hallelujah. <sighs> On Friday, my husband had almost a near-death experience. And when he came out, he said, at some point, I was okay with going because now the sufferings of this present world, the sufferings of paying school fees and rent will no longer be my burden anymore. I have gotten out of this world and I have gone. Giving up is not an option. You cannot be on a deathbed and you're thinking, hey, it would be good to be with Jesus dancing and smiling and saying bye-bye so long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. Goodbye to the world. Goodbye, sufferings. Goodbye, school fees. Goodbye, rent. I am gone. You're on your death. Giving up is not an option. Hallelujah. Some of you have great ideas. Great business ideas. Great ideas the Lord has placed in your heart. But you're giving up. You are giving up. Giving up is not... Hallelujah. Number five, we must confess victory. I thank God that the praise and worship today was all about victory. He has given me victory. We must confess victory. We must declare. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. But I'm tired of meeting people who associate themselves with their problem. You know, between me and poverty, I have only a hundred bob. Between you and poverty, <laughs> how is poverty your portion? Between, I thank God mama taught us this early. Between me and abundance, I have only a hundred shillings. Between me and my blessings and my glory and my, he, he owns a thousand cattle on the hill, I have a hundred bob. We, our tongue, our tongue, we speak forth into the natural, but it goes all the way and manifests in the spiritual realm. So if you say, but you know, Sisi Kwetu, we are poor. I don't think how I can do it. You know, our family, we don't, we de you are declaring it out in the spirit and it will manifest. We keep cursing ourselves. Most of us, we were not cursed. It, you are the cursor. You are the one cursing yourselves. All these curses shall befall you. You are the one cursing yourself. You are cursing yourself with your tongue. Your tongue. This is my headache. This is my headache, Imenuma. Your headache, it is now yours. You've personalized it. You've personalized your sickness. Oh, unajua me, my, my. Hush. You know me, my. Huh? How can you personalize your problems? Declare victory. Declare goodness. Declare blessings. When I told you you have to be violent about the promises of God, this is the place to be violent. Because when you see giving up coming, I was somewhere and this lady asked me, because I said, if you are in a pandemic, Kenya, we went through seven months of lockdown. If in those seven months you didn't learn a skill, you didn't better yourself. Time is not your problem. Time was never your problem. You are locked down. You are shut in for seven months. And you come out as you are. 
Huh? You come out as you entered. Like you didn't better yourself in any way. You didn't add any value to your life. Time was never your problem. Foolishness was your problem. Hallelujah. The pastors know me when I come to preach about foolish. Foolishness of the saints. If you entered a pandemic, seven months in the house, seven months in your bedroom, seven months with you, yourself, and you, and you did not learn anything. You didn't better yourself in something. You know, in this pandemic, people became millionaires. Do you know in this pandemic, people became billionaires? Do you know in this pandemic, people learned skill beyond skill? It's in this pandemic where I learned how to bake. Because every time I had a birthday of a child, I was spending more than 12000 on a cake. If I want a good, nice, tall cake, nine to 12000 I said this with four children, my friend. Where? In whose hands am I surfing? And me, I like celebrating everything. You graduated, let's celebrate. Oh, it's your monthsary, let us celebrate. Now, in whose hands will I be saved if every time is nine to 12,000? Do you know what 12,000 can do on We Care Sunday? A lot. Hallelujah. Needy department. Hallelujah. But if you come out, you're still the same. Your hair is still the same. Your body is still the same. You went in fat, you came out fatter. You went in thin, you came out thinner. Yani, you did not become fit. You went in not knowing the book of Habakkuk. You came out not knowing the book of Habakkuk. You went in not knowing the promises of God. You came out not knowing a thing. You went in not knowing what physics means. You went in not knowing the biology of the pandemic. You came out just as you are. Time was not your problem. We cannot sit and expect to download things from the air. We are sitting, we are sitting, we are sitting. You did not read at least a book a week. You did not learn about finances. You did not learn about market. You did not learn about what you are, where, how this is changing our lives and what we are going to do. My friend, tap yourself in the back and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And so this girl was telling me, you rebuke her so strongly about foolishness. But what if you are depressed for seven months? Ah. Now, when we say giving up is not an option, we put depression in it. I know, I know too well what depression is. Because four times in my life, I've gone through nine months. So four times nine months of full capacity depression. And not just because of my mind, because my hormones are informing me, you are depressed, your body cannot move on, give up, about this child. So I know what depression is. When you speak of depression, I know what it means to be locked on my bed, throwing up 50 times a day, wondering what's the way forward, eating a carrot from morning till evening, sleeping with a carrot under your bed. Do you know what depression is? I know too well what depression is. I ate a carrot for nine months, my friend. I was singing here with carrots. By the time I finish singing, the whole pulpit is full of carrots. Ashes are coming to sweep. Pastor Lisa may even. Do you think I was going home and smiling about it? I was crying on my bed. Do you think I was going home and remember, hey, today I was singing moyo wangu to kapita. Time ya kuimba. Shangilia. Carrots zangu zikanguka zote. Do you think I was going home and smiling? Ah, oh, babe, did you see my carrots? No, I was crying. Babe, did you see my carrots? They fell on the pulpit. I will not sing again. But Saturday you'll find me here at 2 o'clock. Hey, people, it's time to praise the Lord. Because giving up is not an option. You cannot be depressed for seven months. I've told you the righteous will fall. But you have to look for the strength. You have to look within you. Look within your soul, within your spirit. And find the grace. Find the strength of the Lord. And confess it with your mouth. Declare it. I am strong. I will rise. I am not depressed. I speak forth to my mind. Mind, you have no control over me. I will do as the Lord has told me to do. I will not die, but live and declare the goodness, the goodness of God. Doctors told me 
I will not have a single child. Today stand as a mother of four. When they say Hannah was provoked, I've been provoked by mothers here. Oh, oh, you know me, I don't spit. Well, my baby bucket. Oh, you know me, I don't know what vomiting is. Like in the way, in a corner, my baby bucket, you vomit morning to morning. Provoking you, month after month. Provoking you. Penina was a provoker of Hannah. You will have provokers in your life, but giving up is not an option. Hallelujah. We must declare the victory of God. I never saw myself as a mother of one. I never saw myself as a mother of two because I needed my children to have siblings that can dance and fight over with. Because God said it, that he will bless the fruit of my womb. I speak forth to this womb. You will carry forth this pregnancy and we will come out rejoicing. When we say Hannah was barren, when we say the Lord shut the womb, I know what it means for the Lord to tell you, you are going to go through this suffering. We prayed, we fasted, but we went through the suffering. Every day was hard to wake up. Every single day was hard. It was a battle to wake up. Help me, Letitia. Every single day, every day, telling yourself, I must wake up. Telling yourself, I must chew this carrot. Telling yourself, I must reach the end. You look at your pregnancy app, it's telling you, you have 38 more weeks, and you wonder, my God, my God, 38 weeks to go. And when you're about to reach the end, that's when the battle now becomes stronger. When you're about to reach the end, when you're about to get your victory, that's when the battle becomes stronger. Because the enemy knows you're about to sing a song of victory. The enemy knows you're about to declare the goodness of the Lord. So he makes the battle strong. That's why when the Hebrew men were in the furnace, they said, put the heat times full. It looks like they're not burning. Add up the fire. These people must burn. But as they added the fire, that's when the Son of God showed up and manifested at himself, they came out not even smelling of smoke. No matter how much the heat is being added, you will come out. Hallelujah. My time is gone. I pray no matter what you go through, my desire, my burden is no matter what the enemy throws at you, that you will not give up. Because it cannot be an option. No matter what you are going through, no matter what situation, no matter what circumstance, you will come out victorious. You will sing a song. First Samuel chapter 2 is the song of Hannah. Because after that, she had five more children. In total, Hannah sang a song of six children. A woman whose womb had been shut up. A woman who was provoked daily, year after year by Penina. Now, oh, look at you, useless woman. Oh, look at you. You shall never hold a child. They have said things about you. But my Bible says, blessed are you when men shall say all manner of things against you. When they shall persecute you for great. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Rejoice and be exceedingly sitting in God for great is your reward in heaven hallelujah Lord we thank you for your word this morning for in you we find our strength for in you we find hope for in you we find the joy for in you we can wake up each morning no matter what for you have given us perfect peace perfect peace oh god to move on from day to day i pray for anyone here lord who wants to give up strengthen them lord for in our weakness you are made strong your grace is sufficient we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.